My name is Lucia, and I've been married for two years. My husband and I both work and live together in this apartment. I came home from work as usual and was preparing dinner when my husband came home. I greeted him with a smile and asked him how his day was. No different than usual. How about yours? Yeah, it was fine. I think I feel better when I'm doing something. I went back to the kitchen and finished cooking. My husband prepared dishes too. I felt a bit relaxed and thought about my dad. My dad lives in the neighboring town. Since he's getting older, I've been visiting him a lot recently. And I've suggested him to live near us and go to daycare. But he didn't want to bother my husband and me. He wouldn't accept the proposal and said it was enough for him to live as he was. I have always been concerned about my dad, who has been depressed since my mom passed away a few years ago. Recently, my dad fell down at home by accident. He is in the hospital now and receiving palliative care. But I was very worried about his condition. After we finished eating, my husband said, Oh, yes, my mom called me again today, and I told her about your dad. Oh, really? I got a reluctant look on my face and started thinking. Sorry, but I thought I should tell her. Don't worry, they know what they are doing. And if anything happens, I'll be there for you. Okay. My husband said so, but I had a feeling that something might happen. And unfortunately, it soon came true. One night, a while later, my mother in law and my brother in law showed up late at night without notice. They came in without even saying hello and said, I heard about your father. My mother in law looked at me sympathetically. Her body language was exaggerated and deliberate. My brother in law nodded his head and said, I'm sorry to hear that. I tried to be as calm as possible and said, It's okay. To be honest, I wanted them to go home as soon as possible. Both my husband and I had just come home from work then, so we were very tired. My brother in law sipped the tea I had made with a much loud sound. Then he suddenly turned his eyes to me and started to talk to me. So, you're going to get the right to the land, right? And the location of that warehouse. In front of the station is nice, isn't it? My husband and I exchanged small glances. I knew this would happen. That's what I thought. What these people want is my dad's land, which I will inherit. They want my dad to be gone as soon as possible. My mother in law had an unnatural smile on her face and said, it would be a waste to leave the land as it is. That place is perfect for a parking lot. If we turn it into a parking lot, we can get a lot of money. I was almost at a loss for words. But then I said, My father is in the hospital, and it hasn't been decided yet that I'm going to inherit the land. I almost scrunched up my face as I said it, but they were not listening to me. My mother-in-law and my brother-in-law are now talking to my husband about the advantage of using the land as a parking lot. 
They even showed him details on the computer they brought. My brother-in-law used to be a salesperson, so he seems to be good at this kind of thing. But from the first time I met him, I didn't like him because he was condescending and insensitive. As for my mother-in-law, from what my husband told me, she was a typical toxic parent. She was a housewife but got addicted to gambling, such as horse racing and slot machines. She kept wasting money. She never cooked or cleaned well. And she had been yelling at my husband every day since he was little. Also, she denied his personality and decided which friends he should associate with and which school he should go to. She seems to get along with my brother-in-law because they are very similar. My mother-in-law still calls my husband often and asks about everything about him. She often comes over to our house and asks him where he went, who he was with, what he was doing and so on. And we have to stay with her for a long time. I thought I had to put up with it and have a good relationship with her because she is my mother-in-law even if she is like that. But I've realized that it would be better for us not to get involved with each other. I heard my husband say so several times. Mother-in-law used to ask me, aren't you pregnant yet? You must have a problem. Every time I see her, she tells me to stop working and receive fertility treatment. She was very different from my warm-hearted parents who didn't try to control me. And she was a very difficult person to deal with. My mother-in-law judges the value of family members based on how useful they are for her. When she saw the look of annoyance on our faces, they left that day. But it didn't look like they had given up on the land at all. They kept calling us and saying something like, I found a contractor to do the construction work. And they kept coming to our house one after another, even though I had not even inherited the land. After a while, the police told me that a car has been parked on the land near the station for a while. I was suspicious and went to check it out, and what I found was a familiar minivan. It was parked in the middle of the land. It was my brother-in-law's car. I called him and he said, we are close friends, so that shouldn't be a problem, and that I'm being stingy. He didn't want to move his car, saying it was convenient. My husband told him to stop that again and again, but he didn't listen. So my husband yelled at him and finally got him to stop. But he did it again a few days later. The other day, my mother-in-law suddenly barged in right in front of us. Jeez, we've been trying so hard but nothing has proceeded. If only your father would pass away soon. My brother-in-law said, Yes, that would make that land free. They were not afraid to say that to me, but my husband couldn't stand it and said, Neither of you two has the right to say that. Think about how Lucia feels. Go home. But it seems like they didn't care at all and they kept coming to our house. It was very stressful for me just to have to deal with them. Often I couldn't sleep at all and I felt like I was going crazy. A few weeks later, on a cold windy day, my dad passed away in his sleep. The last time I spoke to him, he looked frail but healthy. I was shocked that this happened so soon. 
and it made my grief even deeper. My mother in law and brother in law just came to the wake and left quickly. My husband and I were relieved. It's better than having the insane people clamoring around and stirring up the funeral. After that, we had quiet days, and I felt relieved for the first time in a long time. After completing the procedures to inherit the land, I went to look at it because I had a plan. But what I found was a parking lot paved with asphalt and almost filled with cars which I didn't recognize. For a moment, I couldn't believe my eyes, wondering if I had been in the wrong place. My mother in law and brother in law arrived as soon as I called them, looking calm and confident. I asked them what was going on. You were busy with the funeral, so I made a run into a parking lot. We even called the contractor. We were so busy these days. They were patronizing. Apparently, many of the parked cars belong to people they know, and they've already made contracts. Oh no, I never agreed to any of that. I was losing my temper, and I guess they couldn't take it anymore. My mother in law said, You are my daughter in law, so your land is ours. There's no problem. If you move the cars, I'll sue you. You'll regret it later. I don't care what will happen to you. I was really angry at that time. My husband was really angry too and said, I didn't think you two were so insane. I'm so disappointed. But my mother in law and brother in law were in a good mood. Oh, Come on, we'll give you some of the income. You should be more grateful to us. Oh, and the construction fee was pretty expensive. I'll bill you later. He was very aggressive and selfish. After that, we tried several times to talk to him and to stop parking the car, but he wouldn't listen to us at all. My mother in law looked at me like, I was crazy and said, As you are my daughter in law, of course your land is ours. Do you remember how much we've helped you? Then my brother in law said, Hey, when are you going to give us the land? We'll keep waiting. My mother in law even suggested us to get divorced. My husband was frustrated. And tried his best to fight back. Are you sure you want to do this? You'll regret it. Sometime later, I found a luxury black car parked in the parking lot. My mother in law and brother in law immediately rushed there and claimed it was illegally parked. They immediately made a sign saying, Stop illegal parking and move it now. They put sticky tape on it. My brother in law was so angry that he even kicked the body of the car several times. The kicked areas were covered with shoe prints and badly dented. Then they came to us and said, That car must belong to your acquaintance or something. Get the car out of our way right now. And make the owner pay us a fee. And I said, Well, you know what? The land is legally in my name, and my dad gave it to me, and I don't need your permission. Besides, it is the car of an important customer who you have a relationship with. What? A customer? I explained that. The car belongs to the president of my father in law's client. Are you kidding me? My mother in law and brother in law's faces turned pale. 
It's true. We were planning to sell the inherited land to the president's company. We've just closed the deal. The president of the company is a friend of my father's. And they had already been talking about selling the land before my dad passed away. By the time I finished explaining everything, they were in complete panic. Not only did they put a lot of duct tape on his car, but they also dented it badly. It wasn't long before the president of the company angrily called my father in law to tell him that. His car had been beaten up. My father in law, who had turned even paler, came to the house in a panic. He then turned to my mother in law and brother in law and said, You two are beyond insane. What have you done? Apologize to the president of the company right now and to Lucia as well. Two of them are scared of my father in law. So they bowed and apologized to me, wobbling and shaking. I answered, This is no longer a problem that I can handle by myself. Even if I forgive you, I don't know what the president will say. But my brother in law said, See, if only you could do something about that, all would be fine, wouldn't it? That's impossible. And then my mother in law said, You must be close to the president. I don't know. That's enough. You did this on your own. Besides, I told you that you regret it. They became silent. Their dream of a parking lot business collapsed after only a week or so. In addition to the cost of constructing the parking lot, The money which had been paid in advance by clients had to be returned in full as a penalty. Of course, they had to pay for the repairs of the president's car as well. So, they ended up owing a ridiculously large amount of debt. And of course, my mother in law and brother in law were evicted from the house they were living in. Because of this, The two of them became enemies. And whenever they saw each other, they cursed each other, saying that it's your fault that they got into this mess. The sale of the land brought in a large sum of money, and I thought about how to spend it with my husband. But ultimately, we decided to save it for the future. By the way, My husband seemed happy that he's no longer involved with my mother in law and brother in law.